Hi everyone, this is Big Face from Big Face Robotics. Uh, you'll know from the last video that I took the robot out for a test drive, which worked really, really well. And one of the improvements I wanted to make was to add encoders to the wheels. Now, I want to make some inexpensive incremental encoders that will be connected back to the Arduino Nano on the interrupt pins. So, I'm going to show you how to make an encoder and, uh, and all the steps to do that. They're going to be attached to the gear that's on the motor side and will count pulses as the wheels turn and allow the microcontroller to measure wheel speed. So let's get started. So I've used these in a previous project and I've got a circuit ready made up. If you look on this circuit you'll see a photo interrupter. That is a sharp unit and I'll put the details on the screen here and this is a very simple circuit just taken off the data sheet again I'll add the circuit onto the screen here I did some trial and error to find the right resistor values and ended up using a 10k and a 220 ohm resistor in this circuit and basically you put 5 volts and ground to the circuit and coming off the white wire is the signal so as something breaks the beam on the photo interrupter, the signal will change from 5 volts to 0 volts or vice versa and will show that something has passed through that gap. Now what I've done in the previous project and what I'm going to do here is I've designed an encoded disk. So I decided to use Inkscape to make a patterned disk which is a disk with alternating black and white lines on it that will pass through the photo interrupter. So I copy and pasted this a bunch of times and used my laser printer to print onto transparency film sheets. So I took a couple of the pattern discs and because the ink is likely to rub off I used some self-adhesive uh, film. It's the kind of stuff you can buy to protect windows. You stick it to a window or glass to, to protect it, to reinforce it. But it works really well in this application, so I cut a piece of this, uh, peeled the backing off, and stuck this onto the ink side of the encoder disc. So now the ink is fully encapsulated between the film and the protective layer. So the next job was then to cut around the circumference of the disc, and also cut the hole out in the middle so it could be mounted onto the, onto the gears. I also 3D printed what I'm calling a backing disc, which is just a flat disc to sit behind the uh, encoder disc just to stiffen it up a little bit and that leaves just the pattern portion of the disc uh, sticking out from the, the edge and this is what's going to pass through the, the gap in the photo interrupter and give the signal uh, change as, as the wheel rotates. So here's what I've ended up with. I've got the encoder disc um, and I've just glued that to the backing disc uh, with a hole in there to sit on the uh, sit over the motor shaft, and then I've glued the gear onto the uh, onto the other side. So super glue is fine for this. It's not going to be taking a lot of force. The gear is going to be coupled to the motor shaft and do all the the hard work. This is just going to spin along with it and pass through the gap in the uh, the photo interrupter like this. So before I put these onto the robot I wanted to do a little test, so I've got a little test set up here. I've got a battery supply, just putting uh, 5 volts um, onto the breadboard. And I've got my photo interrupter encoder circuit set up. As you can see currently it's reading 0.2 volts, I'm just measuring the white wire which is the signal output on this. And if I use something to break the beam in here you'll see the voltage change to 5 volts and off again and break the beam and the voltage changes so I'm going to test this with my encoder disk and as I pass this through the, the gap you should see the voltage change between around 0.2 and maybe 5 volts that seems to be going up to about 4 volts or so 
I'm guessing a, a small amount of light might still be let through the uh, through the darker areas of the disc, but there should be plenty to be able to be detected by the uh, by the Arduino interrupt pin. And what I'll do is I'll set it up to trigger on a change of state, so that actually we'll get around 90 pulses per turn of this encoder disc. And with a two and a half to one gearing on the robot, that should give me over 200 pulses per turn of the wheel, which should be plenty for, for some quite a simple speed control. And as I said, these are very cheap, inexpensive to make. All of the parts are, are a few pounds compared to uh, a lot more for a, a shop bought encoder. So I can also test frequency. So if I put my meter onto frequency and I spin this disc through through the uh, photo interrupter, you'll see the frequency increase. And the faster I spin, the higher it will go. There's only so quick I can do it by hand. But that does show that it is uh, it's working. So there we go. I'm happy with that. The next job is to get all this mounted onto the robot and uh, and do some tests from there. So the encoders are mounted up in the robot. I've 3D printed some brackets. You can see the two encoder photo interrupters in there with the pattern discs. Ready for the next test. Uh, same setup as last time, but obviously I've now got the uh, the encoder discs and everything set up on the robot. So uh, let's run some more tests. So I've got the left-hand encoder plugged into the test circuit. You can see we're reading about 0.2 volts again as I move the wheel. Getting somewhere around 4 volts. It's quite hard to uh, to move it accurately. But 0.6 up to 4 volts. 0.2 volts. So there we go. That's working on the robot. If I flick over to frequency again should be a bit easier to spin uh, the encoder disc accurately now it's on the robot. If I start turning this, you'll see 50, 40. I'll go a bit quicker. Get up to 100 or so, um, 100 or so hertz. And as another test, if I get the motor connected up to the battery, just run it at full speed. You can see a fairly steady 423 hertz uh, coming from the encoder. That seems to be working well. I'm going to flip over onto the other encoder as a test. Make sure that one's still working as well. Just spin that again and put it on the frequency. We'll just check the voltage. Again, somewhere up near four volts, dropping down to point two. So we'll put this one on to frequency and do the same test again and see how closely our motor speeds are matched. So there we go, running on the other encoder. Around 430 hertz from that one, so pretty similar, pretty similar speeds from both motors. Um, seems to be working. Next step is going to be get all this wired up onto the Arduino and, uh, and start writing some code. Okay, so the last test to carry out, I've got the encoders hooked up to the uh, Arduino and it's sending data back along the serial port to the PC and that's logging the, the counts from the encoders. Um, I'm going to test one wheel revolution and see how many counts we get. If my sums are correct and I've got about 90 counts per encoder revolution and a 2.5 to 1 gear ratio, I should end up with about 225 
uh, pulses per turn of the wheel. So if you look at this wheel, the logo's uh, pointing pointing upwards at the moment. I'll zoom in on that. I'm going to do one turn, and you can see the counts changing on the screen as we do that. So here we go. There we go, it's about back to where we started, give or take, and 221 counts, so give or take my inaccuracies of turning the wheel back to the right position, we're, uh, we're about right there. I'll try it once more, so we're at 223. We are back at the top and 450-ish is uh, pretty much spot on. And just to show how the other wheel's working as well, I'll just give this a turn and you can see the count increasing on the screen. So they're both working. So there we go, a quick tutorial on how I've added encoders to the robot. Um, an upcoming video I'm going to write a bit of code to control the motor speeds uh, using the encoders and hopefully give a demonstration of, of why you want to use that, that sort of closed loop control instead of just open loop sending a signal to the motors and hoping they turn at the same uh, same speed. I'm going to try and maybe use just a one joystick uh, control for the robot and free up a, another joystick for controlling other things in the future. So come back for that. So please hit subscribe, like this video uh, if you like what I do and leave a comment below if there's anything else uh, you need explaining um, around this bit of the project and uh, as always thanks for watching.